Hi, I'm uh, Richard Baum. I'm here in Wiesbaden, Germany. And uh, my topic today is actually Antagonist Alpha versus Beta or Oshi. So there have been recently uh, a number of advancements in diagnostics for neuroendocrine tumors, which are listed on this slide. And my topics will be Dota LM3 and Data LM4, which are new antagonists as well as use of alpha emitters, uh, mainly actinium, but I also will mention lead 212. And finally, uh, terbium agonists and, and agonists, which uh, are discussed very shortly. So end agonists label more SST2 sites and agonists in human cancer tissue, which was demonstrated by the group of Roybi in Bern in Switzerland uh, already more than 10 years ago. And as you can see here in this uh, ileal carcinoid neuroendocrine tumor, there is much more uptake by the DOTA bus, which is an end agonist, as compared to DOTA Tate, which is the agonist. We performed already uh, more than 10 years ago the first patient studies using end agonists, and in this case, Nodaga GR11, which you see here on the right. And you see that the uptake in the same patient in the tumor is much higher and the background in the liver is much lower, which allows detection of quite small lesions, as also shown on this slide where you see on the left the scan with the DOTA TOC PET CT and a large tumor and some uptake in lymph node metastasis. And on the right, you see the same patient imaged with Nodaga LM3 PET CT where you can detect also three liver metastases, as shown on this slide. So the agonists actually stay longer in the tumor and have higher uptake, as also seen in this patient with a lot of uh, bone metastases, who had a paraganglioma. If you compare on the left the Doda TOC PET CT with the Nodaga LM3 PET CT on the right, you see that there are many more lesions detected. Now, our group, together with uh, Frank Rösch, have developed a new chelator, which is called DATA, so not DOTA, but DATA. And this was coupled to a novel antagonist, which is called LM4. And this uh, antagonist and the new chelator demonstrated most physiological uptake in the kidneys, which you can see here but very low uptake in normal endocrine organs like the pituitary gland, thyroid, and adrenals, and very high uptake in metastases like in the liver or uh, in the bone. As shown here, we can see very, very small bone lesions uh, here in the sitting bone or ischium on the left, and also in the proximal left femur and in the skull base, as well as uh, in this patient with a lot of very small bone metastases in the cervical spine, which are not even seen on the CT scan. So uh, also in soft tissue, like in this case, breast cancer metastases shown uh, of a neuroendocrine tumor, very small lesions not seen on CT or MRI in these patients. And we also have used LM3, uh, which is novel and agonist labeled with uh, lutetium. Uh, in patients and have shown, if you look at dosimetry, that the uptake in the metastases is about five to eight fold higher, for example, in liver and in lymph node uh, metastases as compared to our standard uh, DOTA TOC, and also that the residence time in tumor is higher. This is a patient which has very faint uptake on DOTA TOC PET MR. As you can see, there is only very one faint liver metastases in the upper row, the second image on the right. Whereas on the Nodaga LM3 PET CT, you see very strong uptake, which translates also into a very high uptake seen on SPECT CT after therapy in this patient. Now, what does that mean in practical terms? In practical terms, it means that we can treat patients which have a weak uptake on Dodatate or Dodatoc, PET-CT if they show strong uptake 
uh, with the antagonist. This is such an example of a patient. I will not go through his long history, just showing that he was treated already at Stanford with four cycles of Lutatera peptide receptor radionuclide therapy in 2020. But the uptake, as you can easily recognize on this image to the far left with copper 64 dodatate was very weak. Whereas some months later, the same patient image with data LM4 showed dramatic uptake in more than uh, 200 liver metastases as imaged uh, on our PET-CT scanner. And then the patient was treated with LM3, which is a very similar antagonist to LM4. And as you can see, after several cycles of uh, antagonist therapy, the patient responded very well and there was only one liver metastasis left. That means that even patients refractory to Dota Tate Lutetium or Lutatera therapy uh, can have some profit from the antagonist. So what about the alpha? Now, alpha radiation therapy is much, much more powerful than the beta energy. We call it linear energy transfer is about 100 times greater than uh, with the beta. What does that mean? It means that you can destroy the DNA much more effectively than using beta emission. This is also shown on this slide. So the range of cells hits by beta is about 10 to 1000 cells, whereas alpha particles have a very short range, but they completely destroy the DNA because the LAT or the energy is much, much higher than for beta particles. And as you can see, OSHA emitters have a very small range, so they hit only single cells, very low energy, but they kill the cells very effectively. Now, what is difference between radioisotopes? The difference between radioisotopes is the energy the radioisotope has and actually the so-called physical half-life. So how long it takes until half of the amount of activity is decayed. And as you can see here, the lutetium uh, has a half-life of around uh, 6.7 days and decays to beta and gamma, whereas gallium is a pure beta emitter with a very short half-life. And the alpha emitters uh, most used is actinium-225, has a half-life of 9.9 .9 days and a very high energy, as you can see here. Other emitters uh, used, alpha emitters used are, for example, radium, which you might have heard of, and lead, which I will explain a little bit uh, later. Now, the first treatment of neuroendocrine tumors with an alpha emitter was actually done in Heidelberg, Germany, at the German Cancer Research Center by the group of uh, Gratochville uh, and colleagues. And they used Bismuth 213, which is a decay product of actinium 225. And uh, this was the image of the year already 10 years ago in 2012 at the SNM meeting. And you see that liver metastases in this patient, not even responding to yttrium-90, disappeared completely after intra-arterial use of bismuth 212 doda -toc. Now, our group uh, at my time in Bad Berka has treated a large number of patients with actinium-225. And we have published some of these patients, for example, uh, a patient with a neuroendocrine tumor of the thymus, which has extended pleural metastases, as you can see here, and progressed very fast within one year. And then we treated the patient with actinium dodatoc, and there was a nearly complete remission uh, of the disease despite failure on previous uh, beta therapy. This is another patient which we treated intra-arterially with actinium 225 dodatoc. And again, there was a response to the alpha therapy despite failure of beta therapy. Those who are interested can have a closer look and read an extensive chapter we recently published on alpha PRT using actinium 225 agonists and antagonists. And there are some examples uh, showing here like this young man coming from Norway with uh, a lot of liver metastases and extrahepatic disease. 
uh, progressing despite uh, lutetium treatment. As you can see, there were then a lot of uh, bone metastases and we treated the patient again with lutetium and later on with actinium. And there was a good response uh, to the combined lutetium and alpha treatment. This is a dramatic uh, patient, actually a wheelchair bound patient from Sudan, uh, who was a colleague and uh, had been previously treated with chemotherapy and uh, lutatera uh, at the university hospital here in Germany but failed the treatment and had severe progression of the disease. But after one cycle of actinium and even more pronounced after the combination of actinium and lutetium, he had a very good response and went from wheelchair bound to working part-time again uh, as a medical doctor and was even able to visit our World Congress last year here in Wiesbaden. So there are other groups uh, reporting on actinium dodatate, for example, the group from India, from uh, Professor Baal, and they showed some cases where there was a very good response with actinium dodatate uh, used in these patients in, at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in New Delhi, uh, India. So the new star, so to say, on the horizon and great hopes are related to LED212 or PB212. And there are now different generators uh, available. And we recently established one generators uh, at the University of Mainz, which is not far from the center in Wiesbaden, where I am working on. And as you can see here on the decay scheme, LED to 12, which has a half hour of 10.6 hours, decays to bismuth to 12 and later on to polonium and is a very powerful uh, alpha emitter as uh, shown by the group at Excel Diagnostics in Texas with uh, Dr. Del Passant, who uh, reported at the last World Congress about this therapy and published his results in the Journal of uh, Nuclear Medicine. So this was a phase one clinical trial, a very early use of a new compound in patients with neuroendocrine tumors. And there were some patients which were showing an even complete response after injections with alpha dotamtate, how it is called. Uh, so this patient with liver and bone metastasis had uh, 11 months follow-up and uh, persistent complete response to the treatment. And overall, the LED to 12 dotamtate was safe and uh, highly effective. So 70% of the patients demonstrated a response on somatostatin receptor imaging, and there were no clinically significant renal or hepatic or hematological adverse effects. So um, the last uh, issue I would very shortly discuss uh, are the OSHA electrons. And the OSHA electrons have a very short range, but a very high LET, so they can single tumor cells. And we did perform in a collaboration with the Paul Scherrer Institute in Willigen, Switzerland, the first clinical trials. Uh, so that was a quite complicated research project. It involved reactor facilities, research laboratories in uh, three different countries. And finally, we applied the label Terbium 161 to patients at my previous center in uh, Bad Berka. And as you can see here, that was the first in human use. There was good uptake of this OG emitter and beta emitter terbium 161 dolar which might become as a very interesting compound in addition to lutetium. So the ideal cyanostic compound for the future would be a radioisotope, which you can image preferentially with PET-CT and which you can also use as a targeted alpha therapy. And I just would like to mention that there is such a radioisotope, which is terbium 149 which can be used, as you can see here on the right upper image in an animal, for imaging tumors with PET-CT, but which is also a powerful alpha emitter. So these have not yet been used uh, in patients, but we are looking forward to do it. We have now a collaboration, a collaborative project within the European Union called Horizon 2020, 
And in this project, we get new radioisotopes provided uh, like astatine 211, which is another very interesting alpha emitter with a half-life of 7.2 hours. And we look forward to receive it within the next future, probably from Denmark, from Copenhagen. But as you can see, also terbium-162, terbium-152, which we have already used, and actinium-225, which is still a very rare radioisotope, as well as imaging compounds like scandium-44 and scandium-47. So I would like actually to thank many people around the world, my group at the Kuranovsikum here in Wiesbaden, but many radio chemists and scientists and colleagues who work together with me. Uh, and I wish you a good day and I hope you had some enlightening ideas and knowledge from my presentation. Thank you.